So I'm talking with David from the Bitcoin Fund. Hi. Hi, it's David. You're from Malta. Yeah. So did you come all the way from there for this conference? Yeah, from Malta to London, London to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to here, now back through New York, New York to London, London to Lisbon, another event, and from Lisbon to Frankfurt and Frankfurt to Malta. Oh my goodness, I can't believe you remembered all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long schedule. So if you're not too jet lagged, tell me what Bitcoin Fund is. Sure. Um, basically, this is Bitcoin for institutions. If you are an institution, for example, uh, like a hedge fund, you cannot book Bitcoins on your book because what are Bitcoins? They're not commodities, they're not equities. So what we're doing is we made a fund so institutions can actually, for example, like a hedge fund, book units in a fund on their books. So this opens the world of Bitcoin to institutions. So instead of the normal way where we, you open something to the small guys, we're opening it to the big guys so they can invest with, with us. It's not just institutions themselves, but institutional investors, which means any person qualified to engage in, uh, in institutional trading, um, can, can invest in Bitcoin. The advantage is, um, instead of having your own wallet and investing in Bitcoin yourself and making sure that your wallet is not deleted or tampered with, you can um, give your money to the fund, which is a very simple structure. One unit in the fund is one Bitcoin. So basically, if you want $10,000 worth of units in the fund, we go and buy 10,000 units worth of Bitcoin. So effectively what it is, is an institutional wallet that gives the safe keeping of the wallet in check. Also, the fact that it is fun, you can also write it down in your inheritance because you cannot pass Bitcoins through your lawyer as an inheritance, but you can pass a fund over to your, to your kids or, or, or whoever you want to, to, to give the money to. So it's a structured way of Bitcoin. So we're kind of like putting white in the gray areas of Bitcoin, if you might say, put it this way. Do you guarantee the Bitcoins that are in your fund against like theft or loss? I bet people would be concerned about hacks and things like that. How do you protect them against that? One of the advantages of the Bitcoin fund is um, safety. We have one wallet, one single wallet. It's actually the second biggest wallet in the world. Well, it can check it on online. To safeguard this wallet, which of course it's it's worth like roughly about 13 million right now, so with 92,700 bitcoins to be exact, we have bank vaults in Switzerland and around the world that we keep in hard drives the the actual wallet, so it's pretty impenetrable from a physical point of view to to get access to the to the drives themselves. So that's an extra layer that we're providing in the world of safekeeping. Another advantage is, let's say if you're an institution, which this is only dealing with institutions and you have a order to fill for half a million even a million and um, dollars worth of bitcoins it's very hard for you to get filled on Mount Gox and if you get filled the market will move against you yeah. however with us since we have the second largest holders of bitcoins we can market match internally because we always have people who want to sell so we'll market match and you not even have to go to Mount Gox sometimes there might be huge orders which we have to go to Mount Gox where we can skim your order in a way that the market doesn't move against you because we are prime brokers, of course, this is what we do. So we give best fills to our customers when they want to get filled on pretty good sized orders. And uh, of course, it, no one else can do it better because anyone who wants to buy Bitcoins would have to go through the exchange themselves. While with us, we can satisfy most of the demand through our own pool. It sounds like you're storing the Bitcoins in cold storage. It's pretty safe. But what if somebody wants to withdraw Bitcoins from the fund? What is the process for that? If someone wants to withdraw Bitcoins, so basically redeem their, their units in the fund, you can have two, two things. You can withdraw anytime you want, and you can withdraw either money, as in like dollars, euros, and Russian rubles, or Bitcoins. Since we're actually buying Bitcoins, you can say, hey, I have a million of dollars worth of Bitcoins with you. Can I put them in my wallet from your wallet? Yeah, you can do it instantaneously and it, it, it's a seamless transaction. So it's actually not just a fun and a financial instrument. It's actually holding Bitcoins, which you can transfer in your own wallet. Okay, and do you accept U.S. customers or is it only in the Eurozone? Before now, we accepted everyone in the world except U.S. people because of the SEC. Right. Uh, in fact, we had to pull the, the plug on, on all the American clients. However, we set up a feeder fund, which is set up in Delaware, compliant with all the SEC, the Inland Revenue, and in the US. 
So now, actually, since last week, the market is open for, for the Americans. We had a lot of inquiries by the U.S. since for the past three months, by email, phone. And every time I have to put the phone down and say, thank you, but we cannot accept you. But from now, through the feeder fund, which is exactly what the master fund does, we can actually accept U.S. customers. Where can people find out more? What's your website? How can they contact you? If people want information about us, they can go on the feeder fund website, since we're talking about mostly U.S. clients, which is www.bitcoinfund.us. And there is much of the information that people would need to to navigate through to, to know everything about us. David, thank you so much for talking with me today. I appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. You're listening to Let's Talk Bitcoin, the premier audio cast providing news and insights that cover the rapidly evolving world of digital money. Our twice weekly shows include analysis of late breaking news, updates on key technical, business and regulatory issues, and in-depth interviews with the key people driving the new digital economy. Let's Talk Bitcoin offers sponsors an attractive way to reach a targeted and savvy audience. For more information, email sponsors at letstalkbitcoin.com. Talking with Adam King from CoinFlash. What is CoinFlash? Well, CoinFlash is our new startup. We've launched, uh, well, we did a better soft launch about two weeks ago. And what we're doing is we're uh, we're creating uh, an agent network that allows consumers to go in to local trusted retail locations and purchase bitcoins for cash instantly on location. That sounds really useful because so many people are like, where the hell do I get bitcoins? I don't want to wire money to the sketchy like Russian account. So what do I do? Exactly. That's uh, we're trying to solve that. But at the same time, we, we want to make it basically we want to make it easy for people. That's the entire thing that we're trying to accomplish here. And we don't, we don't believe that waiting seven days for a bank transfer to clear or, as you just said, sending wiring money to just some sketchy company in whether it be Russia or Japan or with the, you know, the, recent, the recent crackdown on Mt. Gox that now you can't transfer money through Diwala to uh, Mt. Gox anymore. We, want, we basically want to keep the availability there while fully complying with all the new federal guidelines and regulations that have come out. Uh-huh. So, and so, how do you how do you manage that? How do you do run a business like this and comply with what whatever you think you're complying with? So, we, we've spoken with a lot of different lawyers on the subject, and what we've actually been able to do is centralize all of the regulatory compliance on the corporate level, and then create an agent network where it's all passed through. So, our agents don't need to individually comply; they're working for our, our company, CoinFlash. And so, so they don't have to worry about they don't have to worry about market volatility. They don't need to worry about uh, federal uh, compliance. They do. There are some requirements. They do need to comply with our internal policies as well as our anti money laundering policies. But they don't actually have to file any paperwork. They don't need to uh, go through all of this the same rigmarole that the Coin Flash company itself needs to go through. So you're taking on basically all the risk that prevents people from getting into this business in the first place. That's really cool. Exactly. We are, we're, we are taking on all the risk ourselves. Um, and we've done a lot to, to mitigate a lot of the risks for ourselves. Um, and we are making sure that we do fully comply. And it's, it's something that kind of makes us unique because a lot of the uh, companies that are out there today, unfortunately, well, we do think they're great ideas, things like the Bitcoin ATM, or even as I'm standing next to you talking about Lamasau, which is right next to us. I've spoken with all of them. They're really great guys. We're a little unclear on how in the end they're actually going to offer their services in the United States because of all of the federal regulations that have uh, come out in the past few months on the issue. Right. So so the idea is to build this network and then, you know, what would happen? So somebody would go, walk me through a typical transaction. Someone would go to like a local drugstore and they'd say, I want to buy some bitcoins. They'd hand over some cash and then they buy bitcoins for a percentage over spot and then you split the difference of the, the percentage over with the merchant? Is that what how it goes? Right. So it basically works like this. A customer will come into a store. That, well, first they'll go to our website and they will find a location in their local area that offers coin flash services. They'll walk in, they'll say, hey, I want to buy some bitcoins. The agent that's representing coin flash will then scan a QR code with their, you know, for their bitcoin address and then enter a couple of details about them, how many bitcoins they want to buy or if they prefer to say, you know, I'd like to buy $100 worth of bitcoin. You can, we can go that way too. Give us their name and then a, either an email address or a phone number to send them a receipt. And the, all that information is stored securely on our servers. And they, the funds are then transferred instantly from CoinFlash itself directly to the customer in store on the spot. 
Okay, so people get their Bitcoins pretty much instantly. They do it from a physical location. That sounds great. And for cash. And for cash. Okay, so uh, tell us your website. Where can people, if they want to follow you on Twitter or keep up with you or whatever? Yeah, on Twitter, we're at, uh, at CoinFlash, and our website is www.coinflash.com. And people can request a location, right? I think I did that myself for my yep. town that I live I've, in. I've, I've probably seen your location request because <laughs> I monitor it daily. Uh, yeah, uh, so you can go to our website. You can either request a new location if we don't have a location in your area, or you can actually sign up to become an agent. And to your point before, it, we have a pretty progressive commission structure. So all of our agents do make a commission on, on their purchases. Cool. All right, Adam, thank you so much. <laughs>